we've been in this series, Miracles, for the past week. Last week we kicked this series off. This is week number two. And part of the, part of the desire that we have as a staff in going through a series like this is to step back from 2024, step back from our own lives, and to take a look all the way through Scripture to see how God has moved and He's been faithful time and time again. Moving in, in, in miraculous ways. Um, I'm not sure if you understand the gravity of what we've been through lately. Uh, getting kicked out of this school, we're actually going to be moving next week to a different school. This is the last Sunday we'll be here. We're moving to Black Rock Elementary just, just across Highway 7. It's in Erie, technically. Uh, it's just a couple minutes north of us here. Uh, but when the school called and told us that they wanted to cut ties with us, you know, in, in, a, in a moment of panic, I, I ran to God and I said, God, I don't know what to do. I, I don't know where else to go because Adams 12 School District wants us uh, out of the building uh, for, for good. And so uh, there's not another place within our target area that we feel like God has called us to reach here in Northwest Denver. And there's just not another option for us. And we've known that for years. In fact, that's why we bought land a couple of years ago, because we thought if there's not another space that we can rent, like a storefront or a warehouse space or something like that, then we have to go ahead and just bite the bullet, buy some land, and build a building. But initial costs on the building were going to be like $7 million, plus the $1.2 million that we already paid for the land. And so by the, by the end of the day, we're spending millions of dollars. And, and that's just really, to be honest with you, that, that goal was out of reach immediately. Uh, so we got on our knees. And so that's why that song that we just sang means so much to me because we got on our knees. We saw God move. We saw him open a pathway. The only place that was available is the building that we are currently under contract on. And it's an incredible miracle. And I want you to see that. Not, not, not just so you can step back and admire uh, our, our staff and our faith, uh, our leader's faith in this church, but, but I want this for you in your own life. Because God can work a miracle when there seems like there's no other way. Now, if you've been following the story, you know that this lady that we're buying this building from backed out of the contract, uh, not the contract, she backed out of the deal that we were talking about uh, a few months ago, and we were back to square one. So we started looking again. And once again, there was nothing available. And it didn't make any sense to me because I, I had seen, Pastor Nick and I had seen God's hand move in such a way that we, we got to a point where this seemed like the only logical conclusion. All that to say, I want you to experience a miracle in your own life. It's possible. God can move in ways that you've never expected him to move. And it's exciting. I lived a very safe life uh, most of my life in ministry. I, I was a college pastor. Maybe that's not too safe. I was a college pastor, meaning that we had a, a college ministry in our church. We met in a building at our own campus. We would, we would constantly see hundreds, like maybe five to six to 700 students, depending on the year, uh, a part of our college ministry. And we had a Sunday morning service just like this in a building just like, kind of like this. And, and, uh, and it was a fun time, but, but I, I, I lived a safe life. I didn't have to step out of my comfort zone often. And so therefore, I didn't really see God move. Yes, he answered prayers. Yes, he was still moving in and through my life. But I'm talking about, man, I never had to step a, a, a leap of faith uh, to see God move. And until we planted this church... And time and time again, we have seen God's hand move in such powerful ways, ways that we just can't explain. Uh, and so I, I, I want that for you. I want that so badly for you. Because this is not just a religious thing. We're in a relationship with the living God. All of us who claim Jesus' name, all of us who are followers of Jesus, have this opportunity because we have relationship with the living God who created everything who has everything. So your miracle is possible, and I want you to see it. Now, um, we, uh, I don't know if you have 
a ring doorbell or a video doorbell. Those are the greatest inventions because I don't have to get up and see who it is. I can just look on my phone and see who it is. And if it's one of you, I know that I can just play like I'm not home, you know? <laughs> so uh, uh, not really. I would answer the door if you were there. But, um, but you know, the, the, the scariest thing in the world, the scariest thing in the world, when I first uh, installed that ring doorbell on my phone was uh, at night. I was sleeping and I heard the wind chimes go off on my phone. And it said, there's a person at your front door. It's like three in the morning. And I was, I was terrified. <laughs> I grabbed my phone and I looked and, and, and what I realized is it wasn't anything. It was just a car that drove by. But in that moment, I was so terrified because I thought somebody's at my door and I don't know, I don't know where a baseball bat is. I don't know, what, how, how do I do this? I mean, I'm a man, I can do it, but just tell me what to do, God. So, so in that moment of fear, uh, I realized, oh, it was just the movement that caught the camera's eyes. And, and, and you know, we have, we have such great technology these days. You don't, have to, uh, you don't have to turn on a faucet in some bathrooms. Most bathrooms, it's just, it's, you know, it turns on by motion. Uh, you don't have to even do the soap dispenser. It's sometimes by motion, just, just by putting your, your hand underneath it. That movement of your hand dispenses soap. You get to wash your hands without touching anything. Uh, you get to wave in front of the, uh, you know, the, the paper towel dispenser and that comes out. So you can walk out of the bathroom without having touched a thing. And I don't know about you, but when I became a parent, uh, I became a germaphobe overnight mainly because my girls, when they were old enough to sit in the cart, they would put their mouths on the handle. Anybody remember that <laughs> those days? Uh, it's disgusting. And this is before the pandemic and I, I, I just became a germaphobe. So these things that are movement, caused by movement or, or happen by movement, those things are so powerful to me and they mean a lot to me. I'm gonna get emotional. I'm just kidding, I won't. Uh, but there are some miracles that will only be activated in your life by movement. Today, as we continue our series on miracles, the miracles of Jesus, I want to speak from this thought that miracles require movement. There's an incredible story in the Bible that shows us how a woman's movement activated her miracle. If you've been in church, you've heard this miracle before. It's Mark chapter five. We're gonna be in verse 24. Listen to this. It says, so Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who'd been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all that she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She moved towards Jesus. She pressed through the crowd towards Jesus because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from suffering. This woman who for 12 years had little to no hope, finally found freedom and healing. Notice she didn't just sit back and say to herself, if God will bless me, then he'll bless me. If it will be, so be it. She didn't say that. She didn't say that at all. If, if God will bless me, then he'll bless me. Or, you know, maybe it's not in the cards for me. He didn't, she didn't say that. She pursued Jesus in her pain, in her suffering, in her humiliation. She pursued Jesus. Years ago, years ago, we had uh, a young family in our church that uh, the guy was just, had this mindset. I, I would meet with him regularly, but this guy, he'd been a believer for a long time, and he, he had this incorrect view of being blessed by God if, he almost viewed it like a lucky streak like if God loves me, and he does, then he should bless me. And I, I tried so hard to, to shift his perspective to say, look, if you need God to move in your life, you've got to get right with him, you've got to pursue him. And it never really landed in his mind. And I, I, I got so frustrated with him. They ended up moving away to a different city. But all that to say, movement 
Miracles require a movement towards him. There are some miracles that will only happen because we move close to Jesus. There's a blessing in moving towards Jesus. There's a blessing in pressing through the crowd and pressing through whatever's in front of you to get towards Jesus. The miracle is on the other side of your movement towards him. And the enemy will try to do everything he can to keep you from pressing towards Jesus. He will. First thing that we see in this passage, the very first thing that we see in this woman, she, she presses past the pain. She presses past the pain. And that pain may be physical, it may be emotional, it may be societal. She, she presses past it. She doesn't really let that hold her back. This lady suffered a lot of pain in her life for 12 years. The pain hits everyone differently. This woman has suffered in pain, physical pain, for 12 years perhaps. Pain hits everyone different. And when it hurts, or when it hits, it really does hurt. Some of us are walking through a lot of different types of pain. Pain can paralyze us. It can stop us in our tracks. And it can stop so many of us from pressing forward towards Jesus. Pain is no respecter of persons. Pain affects everybody. Pain doesn't care about your societal or economic position. Pain doesn't care about your skin color, your country, your career. Pain affects all of us. Doesn't doesn't matter what house you live in, what school your kids go to, how much money you make. For many of us, pain can paralyze us and keep us from moving forward with Jesus. Pain can paralyze us or it can propel us towards Jesus. And some of you are facing serious pain. Some of us are facing physical pain. We know this. We pray for you. We pray for you in our staff meetings. Maybe you have a family member. You yourself. Maybe Maybe it's a physical ailment that you have, and it hurts. Maybe your pain is emotional pain. Maybe you're grieving a loss of a loved one or dealing with worry or anxiety. And maybe that emotional toll on you is just, it's become, it's, it's, it's moved you to a point of being numb in a way. Maybe you're facing depression and the pain hits, and when it hits, it hurts. Maybe you're facing relational pain. Your marriage is on the rocks and you don't know what to do. Maybe you're walking through a divorce or you have walked through one recently and the pain hurts. Maybe you're facing a a relationship of abuse or a history of abuse in your life and it hurts. Maybe you're experiencing loneliness and when that pain hits, it hurts deep. Maybe your pain is more financial. Maybe you can't pay all your bills. You can't seem to get out of debt. Maybe you can't retire like you were hoping to, or maybe you're overwhelmed with the bills and the debt and everything just mounting up and the cost of everything, inflation. Maybe all these things have caused pain and you're stressed over money. Maybe your pain is in your career. Maybe you've recently lost your job, your, or maybe your business sales haven't been what they should be. Maybe your boss or your employees are causing intense pain in your own life. And when it hits, it hurts. Pain can either paralyze us or it can propel us forward with Jesus. That's what I want you to see in this passage today. That just because we have pain in our lives, Just because everything is filtered through God's hands. I want you to see that. The pain that you're experiencing is for a purpose. It can either paralyze you or it can propel you forward with Jesus. This is what I want you to see. This woman has so much pain in her life, but she didn't let the pain paralyze her. She allowed the pain to propel her towards Jesus. The answer is, the answer to pressing past the pain is always pressing in with Jesus. Years ago, Sherry and I, uh, back when we had no kids and we enjoyed our lives, uh, it, was a, uh, it was a fun time. We had, 
we had six years of no kids. And so we got to play, uh, play a lot, you know, vacation a lot. And uh, we, we went to, uh, went on several mission trips together. And, you know, it was fun. Uh, it was a season. And that season will come again when, when our kids uh, move away and we can enjoy our lives again. Uh, but I'm, I'm just kidding, girls. I love you. Um, but uh, there, was a, there was a time there where, where we knew, okay, it's time to start a family. I'm done with seminary. Uh, I'm making a full-time salary now, and we're not scraping by. Um, and my wife, Sherry, she had, she had worked for two years teaching. We'd been married for six, but she got a full-time job teaching for two years. So we were able to save up some money, and it was time to start a family. And uh, we, got, we got pregnant pretty quickly. And, and it was a joyous moment for both of us. It was so good for us. And, you know, we got to go see the sonogram and see the little gummy bear thing on the, on the screen and see the little heartbeat and everything. And it was so cute. And I just couldn't wait to hold this baby. And so our whole mindset shifted to becoming parents. Our whole life started to shift towards becoming parents uh, and responsible for the life of someone else. I'm like, God, how do you, how do, you do this? How do you, how do you like, you're, tr- you're entrusting me to keep someone alive? And, and so far I'm pretty, I'm, you know, I'm three for three on that. Uh, but but all, that to, all that to say, all that to say, uh, a few months into the pregnancy, uh, something wasn't right, and we knew it wasn't right. And uh, long story short, we, we went to the, the doctor, uh, went to the hospital, uh, Sherry got an ultrasound, and, and uh, we didn't hear a heartbeat. And so in that moment, um, that was the deepest pain, and I... I never really understood this kind of pain until we walked through it ourselves. I always just thought, well, you know, you didn't even know that child. How could you have such feelings? It doesn't matter. That's your child. And so we walked through that pain together. Uh, but, but I got to be honest with you, that was such a painful season for us. And, um, and so uh, even, even though we knew we could have other children perhaps in the future, it was still just a moment of pain for us. And and uh, we fought a lot during that time. I, I pulled away from God, if I'm honest with you, I pulled away from him. Now, I'm a college pastor, so I'm, I'm responsible for leading people spiritually. But man, I, to be honest with you, I pulled away from God. It paralyzed me. And, and I knew God was not okay with that. And I knew God wanted me to draw near to him, but I just couldn't. And I was paralyzed. And I, I would put on a face for people, like everything's good. But on the inside, I was... I was angry, I was mad, I was frustrated, I was in so much pain. And little by little, I started moving forward with God because I realized he's my father and he loves me. And he doesn't want me to suffer alone. He wants me to suffer with him. He walks with me in my suffering. He chooses to press in with me in my suffering. And he asks that I press in with him. And so, little by little, I started making pathways back to God. And God began to heal us. And even though it was hard and it was a hard season for us, and we're still not over that. We know that we have a baby in heaven uh, and someday we'll get to see that baby. Uh, But healing came in different ways. Healing came through people like you that encouraged us and came through reading God's word. It came through worshiping, uh, even in the darkness, even in that dark season of our lives. Healing came when we pressed in with Jesus. And God blessed us with three beautiful girls. And those three beautiful girls have been the healing that we needed. God knew that. This world is broken. This world will see decay and death all the time. But I'm trusting that healing can come, a miracle can come through a God that is greater than all that we can see and taste and touch and feel in this life. Pain can either paralyze you or propel you forward. So press past the pain. Second thing that we see from this woman is she presses past the disappointment. The Bible says that she went to a doctor and after the doctor, uh, doctor after doctor, she went to all the doctors that she knew of. In fact, the Bible says she spent all of her money to try to fix this medical problem. And she didn't find any answers to this problem. She spent all of her money. She was completely, probably at a loss of words for God and maybe even just a loss of encouragement in her own life. Has disappointment caused you to stop pressing in towards Jesus? 
Maybe the disappointment of a child who keeps making bad decision after bad decision. Maybe it's the disappointment of a family member and it breaks your heart, ultimately breaks your heart. Maybe it's the disappointment of a person you thought you were going to marry and that didn't work out like you thought it was. You thought this is the only one, the one and only, and they call out the relationship. Maybe that's you and maybe your heart is dealing with hurt and disappointment in that area. Maybe it's the disappointment of getting passed over for a promotion at work. Maybe it's the disappointment of last semester students. Maybe your grades weren't what they could have been or should have been. And maybe your disappointment for your future, you have disappointment for your future and you're just, you're overwhelmed with disappointment. Maybe that's you. Maybe it's the disappointment of prayers that you've prayed and prayed over and over again. And you still haven't seen the answer. And your disappointment, your disappointment, you might be a little disillusioned in this season because you haven't heard God answer you. Maybe you're still dealing with this, with a sickness or some kind of medical issue, and you're still dealing with the struggle. But this lady in Mark chapter 5, she didn't let her disappointment keep her from pressing forward with Jesus. You have to keep pursuing Jesus. You have to keep pushing in, pressing in, press past the disappointment with all your heart because the miracle is in the movement towards Jesus. You got to keep pursuing. She pressed past the disappointment. Your miracle is in your movement. There's a blessing through the pressing through the crowd. And this is, what, this is what, exactly what we see. This lady pressed past the pain. She pressed past the disappointment and she pressed past religion. Don't miss this. The religious law in those days was that if you were bleeding like this woman was, she was unclean, meaning she was an outcast. From a religious perspective, she was disgusting to the religious teachers of those days. Those religious teachers were not Jesus followers necessarily. The religious leaders were people that had added to God's law and added to what he had already said. And so because of that, this religion was, had become something that kept her held back. It made her an outcast. You see, this church, this church and who we are as followers of Jesus is not a religious thing. This is a relationship with the almighty God. That's why we call him father. That's, that's not like a distant name for him. Uh, the word father could be translated Abba, which means dad or, or daddy. Like, like you are a relational God and we are your children and you love us. This is the God that we serve. The religious law in those days kept her from being part of society. She was an outcast because she was unclean because of her bleeding. She must have felt worthless and broken. But she pressed past religion and touched Jesus' clothes. Sometimes religion can keep you from Jesus. Sometimes religion can keep you from pressing in with Jesus. Religion tells you, you've messed up so much. You can't come to church. You've messed up so much, you can't come to God. You can't pray to God. Religion says, you've messed up so much, you shouldn't even be worshiping him. That's what religion says. Maybe you feel messed up. Maybe you feel too disgusting or nasty or broken, unworthy. Maybe you feel like your sin is so bad, you've messed up too many times. you made too many mistakes, so you need to stay away from Jesus. Maybe that's how you view God. But i got to be honest with you, that's not how God sees you. God sees you as a child. And for those of us that are parents, when any one of our children are hurting, it hurts us deeply. I can promise you, when, when you cry, God cries with you. When you hurt, he hurts with you. He's a relational God. But like this woman, do not let religion keep you from pressing in with Jesus. You see, religion says, first go clean up and then come to Jesus. That's what religion says. 
But the Bible says, and Jesus says, come to me just as you are. I'll take all of you, all of your pain, all of your brokenness, all of your failures. I will take you. That's why we say, come just as you are. Uh, there, there are times in, in, in our church's history and in my own ministry where I, I see someone at, pray, to, pray to receive Christ. They, they understand that, that Jesus died for them on the cross, that Jesus gave his life for them personally. And they trust him in that moment and they, they trust him to forgive all of their sin and they come just as they are to Jesus. And God forgives it. He, the Bible says very clearly, whenever we pray and ask God to forgive us, he casts our sin as far away as the east is from the west. But so many times I see people that have prayed to receive Christ. They fail to take the next step and follow Jesus through the waters of baptism. And they, they think to themselves, well, I've got to clean up first. I've got to get my life in order first before I really press in with Jesus. That is a lie straight from hell. Do not believe that for one moment. God wants you to come to him just as we are with all of our brokenness, all of our pain, all of our failures. Jesus says to me and you, he says to you and me, come with all your mess, with all your brokenness. You see, baptism is the first step in obedience. It's not saying I will live a perfect life. It's saying I, I want to become more like Jesus. I will probably sin before the sun goes down today, but I want to follow Jesus in baptism because I want to become more like him. And day by day, follow him, month by month, year by year, you will become more like him. That's the miracle of the Holy Spirit working within you. And he invites you to follow. God works his miracles inside of a mess, always. Your mess only means that you're a candidate for a miracle. That's all it means. You're nothing special. You think you're special because you're messy? <laughs> I, I, got so much, I got so much mess in my own life. I'm a royal mess. And yet God still uses me. And he, he, wants to, he wants to work in and through you as well. This lady pressed past the pain. She pressed past the disappointment. She pressed past religion. And she pressed past the people. The Bible says this lady had to press through the crowd to get to Jesus. And some of you need to press past some people in your own life. People that are holding you back. Some of us have to press past negative influences. Maybe you're hanging out with the wrong crowd. They're dragging you down. They're not lifting you up. The crowd you're running with, maybe they make bad choices. They create bad habits in you. Get some godly people in your life. Students, press it with a youth group. These are people that love you and want to hold you accountable. Adults, get involved in a community group. We're about to take a season off of community groups, but in the fall when we kick off community groups again, find one that fits your life, your schedule. These are people that will support you and love you and care for you. Find some good influences in your life. Uh, there, you may have to press past some doubters, some people that doubt about what God says about you and what God wants to do in your life. Some of us have to press past the haters. Anybody got any haters in the room? I've got some. Oh, I won't mention any. <laughs> These haters, they don't want you to get a miracle. They don't want you to they don't want you to receive anything good from God. They, they want to hurt you, not help you. Haters can paralyze you from moving forward with Jesus. I think probably the hardest person to move past is ourselves. Sometimes it's hard for me to move past myself. I'm the hardest person that keeps me from following Jesus and pressing in with him. And if that's you, I, I can relate with you. Maybe you're like this lady. For 12 years, you haven't seen God move. You haven't seen a miracle in your life. If that's you, I want to share this passage with you. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. It's one of my favorite verses. I say it often because it's a good reminder for me when I'm 
when I feel stuck and I haven't seen God's hand move, it's, it's one of those things that I, I say to myself. It's something I say to our staff often. It's let us not become weary in doing what is right or doing good. For at the proper time, we will receive a harvest if, conditional phrase, if we do not give up. That's the promise. Let us not become weary in what we're doing. Day after day, week after week, month after month, we're going to keep pressing in towards Jesus. And we're going to see a miracle in our lives. We're going to see a harvest if we do not give up. Your miracle is in your movement towards him. There's a blessing on the other side of this pain. The passage continues. It says, at once after the lady had touched him. Listen to this. In verse 30 it says, that at once Jesus realized that power had gone out of him. Power had gone out of him. And he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, the disciples answered. They're like, what are you talking about, Jesus? There's crowd, the crowds are pressing in on you. What do you mean the power is gone from you? And, and he says, uh, but Jesus kept, uh, they, they, said, uh, they said, there's a crowd pressing against you. And yet you, and yet you can ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Your faith has made you whole. That's what the, the Greek wording there means, complete. The, your faith has made you completely whole. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Her miracle was in the pressing in. There's life-changing power in Jesus. And many of you, many of you have never taken that step before. And today you have an opportunity, an invitation to receive what Jesus did for you on the cross. Many of you have taken that first step, but you haven't taken the second step of baptism. This is the first step in becoming more like Jesus. You want to see power changing, miracle working, death to life movement from God? It comes in the pressing in. It comes in moving towards him. We pray with me. Father, we're so grateful for the word that you've given us today. And Father, for the, the encouragement to press in when when you seem silent or when things don't seem to be going our way or maybe when the pain is overwhelming. God, we know that you're there. We, we may not always feel it, but God, we know that you are with us. And Father, today, if there are any in this room or watching online that haven't, haven't experienced true freedom, true healing, Father, for those people, Father, I pray that you'd give them the grit and the strength to start pressing in past the pain, to press past the disappointment, to press past the religious things, maybe holding them back, to press past people in their lives. Father, we are incredibly grateful for what you've done for us by sending Jesus to die on the cross for our sins so that we can have relationship with you, a guarantee of eternity with you, eternal life with you, just by trusting and believing that Jesus died for us. And with every head bowed, every eye still closed, if that's you and you're in the room this morning, And you don't know if you're right with God. And you don't know if you were to die today and you were to stand before God. If you don't know what you would say. If you would say, well, I've been a good person. Or haven't really done too many bad things. Those are the wrong answers. Those will keep you out of heaven. The only thing that can get you to heaven and have relationship with God for all eternity beginning today. Is by you confessing your sin before him and saying, God, I need you. 
by you saying, I believe that you sent Jesus for me to die on the cross for my sins. It's a free gift. The Bible says that it's a free gift for you. And this morning, if you're ready to receive that free gift of eternal life and a forgiveness of your sins, to be made right with God, it doesn't mean that you'll be perfect. It doesn't mean that you won't mess up. But it means that you have someone with you forever that will never leave you. A relationship can start for you today. If you're ready for that, I want you to pray a similar prayer in your heart like this. Say, say, God, I believe that you love me. Just tell him that. Say, God, I believe that you love me. God, please forgive me of all my sins. Just tell him that. Say, God, please forgive me. I believe, tell him this. Say, I believe that you love me enough that you gave your one and only son, Jesus, to die for me. Now, would you thank him for that? Just say, thank you. If you just prayed that prayer for the first time today, would you raise your hand? Would you be bold enough to raise your hand? Nobody's looking around, just you and me. Thank you. Anyone else? If I'd missed your hand, raise it now. The Bible says that when anybody comes to faith in Jesus, there's such a, a huge rejoicing in heaven. And today, there's rejoicing in heaven. Can we give it up for what God is doing in the room? Father, we are so grateful for the life-changing power of the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus that gives us hope in this life, hope for all eternity. God, we're grateful for that. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Let's stand this morning and worship Jesus.